So I listed I listed six issues, uh, which I think um, are really really big challenges that we have to work on systematically over the future. Um, the first I thought about was time, and it was clear from lots of different talks, um, including Karen's uh, in just the last couple, uh, and some of the talks in the earlier, and some of the talks in fMRI, uh, that time is a big issue. And I, the way I see time here is that we sample over time and time series, right, from ranging from milliseconds to years, and what really matters, it seems to me, the, 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 um, the difference between the sampling rate of measurement and the rate at which causal effects actually take right, effect and then stabilize the sun. So Karen showed this beautiful example of entanglement where you have these different rates uh, and they can swing up if you're sampling right, and slow relative to some causal things and faster over to others. Right? I think David and Sergey are going to be working on things about undersampling over time and show us interesting things you can do there. So that's a big issue. Uh, another thing that came up repeatedly was this problem of aggregation. Uh, in genomics, you have single cell measurements. We saw those. We have lots of people doing work on tissue samples, which are blender-like aggregates. Uh, the same thing happens in fMRI. You have, uh, in some cases, single neuron recordings, although pretty rare. And then you have these big aggregates, which are voxels, and even then ROIs, which are aggregates of voxels. Right? So what happens when you aggregate up there is completely uh, unclear and quite challenging. And in economics, you have this interesting problem of the indices like GDP and consumption that are aggregates as well. Uh, dimensionality came out, I think. Um, we have uh, beautiful work on the stability, or the lack of it, <laughs> in constraint-based algorithms, right? The very thing that made them so efficient was also the thing that makes them so unstable. Uh, in climate models, we have this grid size. I know you're hungry to do way more than 200 points and I'm sure you will. Uh, and then there's this interesting issue I thought many people covered and talked about, which is data fusion. Right? You have these different ways to measure the same phenomena. In fMRI, you have lots of them. I've listed a couple here. Um, in signaling pathways, Karen gave us a bunch. Uh, and that happens in all different kinds of um, domains. There's distribution parametric assumptions I think are crucial. Right? Lots of people, including myself, have depended on linearity. Right. Joe is using linearity in, in fMRI and incredibly convincing me that it's actually appropriate when he has these scatter plots that are more linear than my simulations. So right, that's a big issue. And how much you lose right, when you model things as linear systems, even though we know they're not, is really quite unclear. And I think that working is a slant. You don't lose as much as you think you might lose. Right? And there's so much you can gain by treating things as linear in terms of inference. Uh, it's, it would be sure nice to know that you can do things in a linear way and not lose a lot of reliability if that was really true. And then I think last, uh, one of the last things that um, was really important and we didn't really hear a whole lot about uh, was measurement. And I think that to include at least two sub-issues. One which is what variables can you actually measure or model. Right? That's very important in education. And I know it's important in other domains like economics and all the other things we've talked about, but nobody has talked a whole lot about what we might do algorithmically to find what are good measures right, that were uh, constructible from some raw set of measures that we can construct, that we can use. And then nobody, nobody really talks systematically about an issue I think pervades all these techniques, which is measurement error, right? both systematic and unsystematic measurement error. Um, we, we know that, and Karen mentioned it also, that when you project um, a, a fine grain measure onto a coarse grain measure, you lose conditional independence. But you also lose conditional independence when you project, I mean, when you, when you have a, a separator variable that's also measured with error. Right? So what we lose in terms of measurement error and um, what we can do to avoid that uh, I think is an important topic when we actually apply these techniques to real world data. Uh, and that's all I could think of in the 15 minutes that I took. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to, I didn't want to just to talk about any others, but also just to sort of say um, what's next. Um, we're going to post all the slides, so if you have not done so, please send your slides as PowerPoints or PDFs to Lizzie or to me, and then we'll get them posted on the website so we can look at each other's slides. And then the video that's being taken um, is going to be processed by the AV people at CMU. 
and we're going to post that on the web as well, so we'll be able to go back and uh, look at the videos and remember what we couldn't understand. Um, and then I think there's this question of what to do in the future. Uh, I think I'm getting a biased sample, I'm sure, but it sounds like it's a lot of fun for everybody. Yeah. Well, uh, since I didn't read any of the messages, uh, I don't know whether uh, email addresses have been. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. We will distribute and make public, uh, if it's okay by everybody, the email list of this group, because I think there's a lot of mutual interest. So yeah, we'll do that too. Good. And um, in terms of getting a bigger sort of repository, when we first did this grant proposal, the idea was we asked for a lot more money than we got eventually, but one of the ideas was maybe we should do a book in which we have something at the beginning of the book as an introduction to these methods, right? Frederick can write all 490 pages now. <laughs> we'll really get the picture and then have a list of case studies that are organized essentially by discipline so that we can sort of have one reference that people you know, at large can consult to see how these techniques have actually been able to play when they're applied to real scientific problems. So we might do a book, we might do a website, um, we should certainly do a summary paper of some type, I think, in some really notable place. So I don't know really what you guys think about that and tell me what you think in email or to each other or I don't think we're going to decide that now, but I, I would think it would be a loss to, uh, to the scientific world not to have some record besides just the videos that people can get. I would just want to add, so yeah. I think what's very useful is that uh, during all these talks, people say what works, what doesn't work, you yeah. need to use this technique, that technique. So summarizing this knowledge in the form of some lessons learned would be extremely useful for practitioners when they try to apply these methods. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I don't know how to organize that, but we should try something. So, we'll, we'll, you know, suggestions are welcome. Well, let's all think about that. Um, and then I think we have this question of whether we're going to do this again. This is the first try, right? I think given the success uh, we're seeing, I don't think it would be too difficult to raise a little money to fly us to Crete. <laughs> and all the grad students. <laughs> Not that I'm putting any pressure on you. <laughs> but if anybody, if anybody agrees, they you know also send us email and say, you know, let's do this again. Let's figure it out. Uh, maybe somebody can step up and volunteer to host this at some home institution. CMU is great to do this, but <clears throat> the weather tends to be bad for the chunks of the academic year. It's nicer in Crete. Lots of Depends on the German government. Yeah. <laughs> and, and lastly, I really want to say thank you again to Lizzie. I mean, there were lots and lots of little things that I didn't really properly calibrate how much it would take to do it. Thank God she was here so she could do it because if it was up to me, it would not have been close to as good. So. Well, I want to thank Richard for making all the hard decisions, <laughs> all the decisions in gold money, um, and doing an enormous amount of work. Thanks. So,